hunting for hogs is pretty exciting. A lot of people like to do it. There's a lot of pastime hunters, a lot of sport hunting done for hogs. But the reality is, in my opinion, it's about eradication. I love to have fun hunting them and I enjoy to hunt them with every means and method there is. But from a land management standpoint, I understand what hogs do. The incredible amount of damage, how they compete with our wild game, our native game for space and for forage. So I, I'm, I gotta admit, I'm a guy that wants to eradicate them all. When it comes to hogs, I actually have a lot of respect for their ability to uh, elude us and evade us and be a challenge when it comes to hunting them. They quickly feel pressure in an area. They'll either move to another place or change their patterns altogether. Their ability to smell a hunter that's not playing the wind the right way is, in my opinion, pretty legendary. You know, if you go in there wearing your stinky work clothes or you're sweating a little bit or you're hunting them where the wind's in their favor, they're gonna bust you. You're gonna hear that growl of, a, of an old smart sow or a big old boar when they cut your wind, cut your scent, and they're not gonna hang around very long. I don't think there's any way that I have not heard somebody enjoy hunting a hog. You know, you've got guys that run dogs for them. You've got guys that'll hunt them with everything from a, you know, a suppressed 22 to a 300 wind mag. Uh, hunting with compound bows, hunting them with crossbows, hunting with handguns, hunting with air rifles, air bows, muzzle loaders, shotguns. I mean, the list goes on and on. Basically, anything that can launch or shoot a projectile or be used to harvest an animal, somebody's probably doing it for hog hunting. Same situation when it comes to hunting with modern sporting rifles. I absolutely think that a modern sporting rifle was a perfect platform designed for hog hunting. You know, you can get a bigger clip in there, you can put lights on them for nighttime hunting, you can put a thermal on them, you can put, you know, a four by six type power scope so you can quickly get on them and take them at up close and long distances. If you're dealing with calibers that are anything from 556. 223 up to your 308s, you know, you can really knock down some pigs in those types of situations at long and close range. For our first hog hunt, we're joining Scott Newby on a recent hunt where he had an opportunity to take one of those modern sporting rifles from Smith & Wesson out to an area we call the New Field. We're gonna see what the pigs like here. Just a crazy morning with these high winds and never know what was gonna come out, but she came out here all by herself and dropped her right where she sat. She definitely got some size to her too. Congrats, Scott. That's a great big hog to remove from the herd. Later that same afternoon, Scott joined Wade for a walk and stalk style of hunt for more pigs in the area. And once again, they were in for a thrill. Nice shot. <laughs> That's <was> awesome. <laughs> He's been raiding the corn feeder for about two months. Oh, I'll be like, we gotta get rid of him. There's nothing good about him at all. <laughs> no. So we're coming to the muddy and as we're walking up, see this black and white figure that thankfully was a pig. So wind was in our favor, snuck right up and heck I don't know, maybe a maybe hundred yard shot and squeeze one off. So I had an opportunity for another, squeeze another, and dropped right then and there. And now we have a pig down and other happy deer, turkeys, and any other things that we want to grow and get fed. There's another nice shot for Scott once again. Thanks for coming down and helping out with the efforts to maintain population control among the wild hogs. As we all know, one of the main reasons we hunters love hunting pigs is because of the mass destruction they cause to properties, which makes it critical to control their populations. If you have feeding programs or agricultural operations in place, you have most likely dealt with wild hogs causing damage to your feeders or the land. If you're having issues with hogs around feeders, here's how Wade and our team like to protect them on our leases as much as possible. 
You know, a pig is so destructive that they'll even knock down your feeder pens. And, and people that hunt a lot in Texas understand what I'm talking about with feeder pens. A lot of guys will build a feeder pen with hog panel, like a 12 foot long link that's about four feet tall and they'll put T-posts in it, they'll wire it, and you know, that's what they use to keep them out. But if you're dealing with really big pigs or livestock as well, you kind of can ramp that up like we've done. There's, there's some panels that we actually buy, they clip together. Uh, we'll cut some sections out of the top, make it easier for the deer to jump in, and we'll T-post those things so that the deer can't, or the hogs can't push them in. Because I mean, you'll, you'll see those pigs just literally push those panels in. That's how destructive they are. That's how in touch with the environment they are on feeding programs. So yeah, no, I don't like pigs. Don't really like them at all. I think they're fun to hunt, but I actually just despise them. For our next hunt, we're joining Kevin Gieske in a muddy penthouse box blind with a Smith & Wesson M&P 10 chambered in 6.5 Creedmoor, equipped with a high-vis sight. Pretty awesome. One less pig here. We got lots of pigs we got to get rid of. They are uh, destructive to the property and they're, we're getting run over by them. Uh, Smith & Wesson MP 10, 6.5 Creedmoor. Also, it's got the high-vis sight on it, so it's pretty cool. Target acquisition is pretty neat. I'm going to go grab him and be right back. Way to go, Kevin. Thanks for helping to put a dent in the wild hog population. Now, let's catch up with Gentry Applegate, who has recently taken up hunting hogs, and see how he put the Smith & Wesson M&P 10 to good use in another area. There's one, one dead right there, which is pretty successful to me. <laughs> That was kind of crazy how it all went down. Usually I don't have to uh, sit here and figure out which one I want to shoot, get a shot on it. Usually, usually it's one big one and a hundred small ones, not one giant one and a hundred big ones. So pretty excited there. They get a lot bigger when you get up on them, but golly. That might be the biggest one I've ever shot. Sucker's massive. Congrats on your biggest hog yet, Gentry. That's a wrap on our time for hog hunting. As we've seen, there's endless ways you can hit the field to knock down these hogs, but one of our favorite ways to hunt them will always be with a modern sporting rifle. Let's hear from Wade one more time for his final thoughts on hunting these boorish beasts. You know, a pig, as I've said many times, great sense of smell. You gotta play the wind. Uh, I use my stealth cams to kind of pick out where a lot of the places that we're going, try to sneak in there in the right types of setup. They can get real nocturnal on you. During deer season, a lot of pressure on your hunting ranches will move those pigs to be nocturnal. It's not a bad thing, in my opinion. It makes a better chance to get the deer into the areas you're trying to shoot them around food plots or food sources. So if hogs show up on your deer lease or your property, you're in constant competition with them now to get rid of them. You're in a constant battle to manage their numbers. They reproduce way too much, way too fast. And yeah, while they're fun to hunt, other than that, I really have no use for them.